Well, hi, this is Dr. Michael Hockman. I'm author of 50 Studies Every Doctor Should Know by Oxford Press. And today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite studies, that is the COURAGE trial, which was published in 2007 in the New England Journal. And I think the COURAGE trial is a very important study because it addresses a, in a very simple way a very important question. And that is, in patients with stable coronary artery disease, is it better initially to start with a strategy of medical management or is it better initially to proceed to revascularization with percutaneous coronary intervention? So now let's spend a few minutes going into the details. Okay, well, let's discuss a little background about the COURAGE trial. So to begin with, percutaneous coronary intervention, as we all know, involves uh, cardiac catheterization with the intent to place a stent in a partially blocked coronary artery. So currently in the United States, there are over 1 million stents placed in patients per year. It's clearly been established through prior research that there's a benefit of percutaneous coronary intervention in patients with acute coronary syndrome, so acute MIs or unstable angina. However, most stents in the United States are actually not placed for acute coronary uh, syndrome. 85% are placed for patients with stable angina, and the evidence is much less clear. In fact, prior to COURAGE, there's very little evidence about the benefits of PCI in patients with stable angina. So COURAGE tried to take on a very simple question, and that is, should patients with stable angina be managed initially with PCI versus medical therapy? So a couple other pieces of important background. Uh, COURAGE was funded with public funds, the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. The trial began in 1999, and the most recent publication, at least that I'm aware of, was in, from 2011. COURAGE was conducted at 50 centers in the United States and Canada, and it involved over 2,000 patients, and there was, on average, a median of 4.6 years of follow-up. I also always think it's interesting to learn a little bit about the lead investigator for some of these landmark studies. So Dr. William Bowden was the lead investigator for the COURAGE trial. Dr. Bowden is currently the Chief of Medicine at the Albany Stratton VA in New York. During the COURAGE trial, however, he was the Director of Cardiovascular Services at the nonprofit Kalita Health System in Buffalo. So which patients were included in the COURAGE trial? So COURAGE, as we know, involved patients with stable coronary artery disease, and they define this as patients with at least 70% stenosis and clear of, of a coronary artery as well as clear ischemia. Or alternatively, they can have at least 80% stenosis as well as classic symptoms of angina, even if they didn't have an indicative stress test showing clear ischemia. So it's important to note that all patients did undergo a diagnostic catheterization to confirm that they did have coronary stenosis prior to enrollment. There were, of course, patients excluded from the COURAGE trial as well. So they excluded patients with unstable angina as well as high-risk patients. So for example, they excluded patients with class 4 angina or symptoms at rest. They also excluded patients with markedly positive stress tests, for example, those whose heart rate or blood pressure decreased when they underwent a stress test. The reason they excluded these patients is because uh, these uh, findings and stress tests are suggestive of high-grade lesions such as left main disease, and these patients seem to benefit from coronary artery bypass surgery, which we know from past studies. They also excluded patients with unstable heart failure, or refractory heart failure, I should say, and they also uh, excluded patients with an injection fraction less than 30%. So the design of COURAGE is very simple. It was a randomized trial. They took patients with stable coronary artery disease and they randomized them to either medical management or to PCI plus medical management. So patients in the PCI group did also get medical therapy. The medical management that they received was very standard. They received antiplatelet agents with aspirin and clopidogrel. They received lisinopril or losartan for blood pressure management. They re also received anti-ischemic therapy with metoprolol and lodipine nitrate or a combination of these medications. And they received simvastatin and other medications to manage lipids. Okay, so then patients in the PCI group received both medical management as well as PCI. So importantly, again, they received both the medical therapy and as well as revascularization with PCI. So now let's jump to the results 
So it turned out that in the PCI group, 88% of patients did end up receiving the stents, um, receive stents. So as in all uh, clinical research, sometimes patients in the intervention group may not actually end up receiving that intervention. For example, patients may have decided they didn't actually want to undergo PCI, uh, or alternatively, during the procedure, the cardiologist may have decided that they weren't appropriate for receiving the, the stent. However, the vast majority did end up undergoing the PCI procedure. In addition, 70% of patients in both groups achieved their lipid and blood pressure goals. And the lipid target was an LDL of 60 to 85, and the blood pressure target was less than 130 over 85. Now, speaking as a primary care doctor, I can say those are very impressive numbers. The patients were very well medically managed. So here are the key results of the trial. So the primary outcome was death or non-fatal myocardial infarction. And it turned out that the rate of the primary outcome was very similar in the medical therapy versus PCI group. So 18.5% in the medical therapy group versus 19% in the PCI group, and it was not statistically different. The rates of hospitalizations for acute coronary syndrome were also similar, 11.8% in the medical therapy group versus 12.4% in the PCI group, again, not significantly different. And the final outcome they looked at was the need for additional revascularization. So how many patients ended up needing to undergo another catheterization with stent placement or another form of revascularization. And it turned out there was actually a higher rate of need for additional revascularization procedures in the medical therapy group, 32.6% versus 21.1% in the PCI group. And this was significant. So very importantly, uh, patients in the medical therapy group did have to undergo a higher rate of uh, revascularizations eventually. A couple other key points to note about courage. So initially there was a small improvement in symptoms in patients in the PCI group. How, however, after three years of follow-up, the difference was no longer uh, present. In addition, it's worth noting that drug-eluting stents were only used at the tail end of the COURAGE trial. Now drug-eluting stents are much more commonly used than bare metal stents. So some have criticized the study for this reason. And it's also important to note that patients in this study were highly motivated. As I, I noted before, very high rates of lipid and blood pressure control in both groups. So some have raised the question of whether the results may apply to more general population of patients. It's also important to note that other studies are consistent with COURAGE. A couple to be aware of, the Berry 2 d study in the STITCH trial. Berry 2 d was a randomized trial in patients with diabetes comparing medical therapy versus PCI, and again found similar outcomes between the two approaches. And the STITCH trial focused on patients with ejection fraction less than 35%, also found similar outcomes between medical therapy and initial PCI. However, it's imp important to note that patients uh, did best of all, it appeared, if they received cabbage, which is consistent with prior studies. Another important study that was published a couple of years after the COURAGE trial was the FAME-2 trial, which showed that a technique called fractional flow reserve may help uh, selecting patients for PCI. So fractional flow reserve testing is a procedure that's performed during cardiac catheterization, and it measures the pressure gradient across the stenosis. So it helps identify which lesions are actually impeding oxygen delivery to the myocardium. And FAME2 found that when patients were selected using this method, uh, they did appear to do a little bit better with uh, initial PCI approach versus medical therapy. However, most of the benefit, in fact, all of the benefit appeared to be due to uh, the need for repeat revascularization. So in other words, it was very similar to COURAGE in that in terms of heart outcomes, like like heart attacks and death, the two approaches were similar, but uh, initial stenting did seem to reduce the need for repeat revascularizations. So because of the COURAGE trial and the other studies that I just mentioned, virtually all major guidelines now recommend medical therapy as the preferred initial approach to managing patients with stable angina. Uh, the reason for this is that although the two approaches have similar outcomes, uh, medical therapy is associated with lower risks and um, is just a, a less aggressive initial uh, approach. So it's, it's the preferred initial approach. However, the caveat is that many patients who initially receive medical therapy may ultimately require PCI. There are, of course, exceptions 
to these uh, rules. Uh, certain high-risk patients, very similar to those that were excluded from the COURAGE trial, so class 4 angina, those with markedly positive stress tests indicative of a very proximal lesion, should probably be considered for immediate revascularization, typically with coronary artery bypass grafting. And in addition, of course, patients with persistent and bothersome symptoms should be considered for PCI. So back to our initial question, should patients with stable angina be managed initially with PCI versus medical management? I think COURAGE gives us a very clear answer, and that is that medical management is the preferred initial approach.